Hi guys and welcome to number nine farms. Today we're going to be making some banana bread. This is the same banana bread that I would sell at the farmer's market and I've been making it for golly I don't know how many years and my grandson I hadn't made it in a long time and my grandson had asked for banana bread so I had made it last week and I said to myself I want to share that with y'all. So um, this is one, if, you, if you're familiar with going to the farmer's market, it, you could check in your state, um, check out like cottage laws and see what you can do. Cause it, when I first started, I didn't have a commercial kitchen at the time. I didn't have, I just used my home kitchen because as long as you put it on the label, then you can sell it as that it was an unprocessed, um, kitchen, not, or non-licensed kitchen. So Anyways, today we're gonna make that um, same banana Ow. bread. Of course, Rosie has to bark. Ow. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna put our milk, and I always use half and half, but this is where you could use um, buttermilk, and it's three quarters of a cup. So go ahead and just put that in your mixer, or however you hand mixer in a bowl, however you do it. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in the milk. I mean, not the milk, the oil, which is just regular vegetable oil. You can use olive oil. Um, and then the eggs. And I have some duck eggs here. Uh, so what I always want to do, I want to crack them in a separate bowl because these are definitely um, farm eggs. So you... Uh, I've had times I want to drop each one in the bowl it, as I go, but um, these are good eggs for bacon. They have a um, different protein. They provide um, a lot more volume to the bread because they're nice and thick and heavy. And to me, they also have a sweetness to them. So that also provides a little bit of sweetness to your bread as well. And I've always loved um, duck eggs for bacon. They are one of my favorite um, things and I make sure I always have plenty of duck eggs. So now um, I'm gonna go ahead and put your sugar in as well. And I went ahead and got that ready. And we're gonna go ahead and cream all this together. So let's see if I can show you that and it's going to be loud but i can um go ahead and just get that really good and cream and i'll bring you back after i got it um just the way i like it all right so there i have it creamed um the you're gonna laugh at this but uh, the bananas got left in the car last night. I had bought bananas, but at the time when I was making the banana bread for the farmer's market, um, we would go down to our local grocery store, which was right there in the county, and they would always have the bananas for like, I don't know, it was like 39 cents or 29 cents a pound, depending on, because they were, they were the old bananas. And the older the banana, the better the banana bread would be. And, um... So anyways, fancy little cutter here, and always get it backwards, but anyways, um, they're frozen kind of like, but not really, just really kind of hard. So, but a lot of times I didn't even um, cut them up. So, I because they'd be so soft, they just fell right into the, the mix. And usually I use two to three. It depends on the size. And it, like the last time I only had two when I made it and it was uh, the perfect amount. So, it's just up to you, whatever you wanna use. But for this purpose here, I thought I would uh, use the little fancy banana cutter. <laughs> We had bought that for um, you know, our freeze dryer. So you wanna go ahead and cream those a little bit too. Get those mixed in well. And now we can start adding the um, powder. So I've got my handy dandy 
sifter here and I'm going to add in two cups of flour. And of course I forgot to get the cup for the flour. Always forgetting something. I think I got it all figured out. Okay, I'll get it all ready. Oh, look at that. Okay. And two cups. And just, you know, regular old flour there. Put the lid on. And here we go. Okay. All right, I got a little problem here. See, I don't have the little um, cover, the little piece that goes around the KitchenAid because I've literally had this um, mixer since I was 24 years old. And let me tell you something, it has mixed a many, a many, a many a recipe. So, uh, but if you, if you would have that plastic, that would help to keep the um, flour in. So, let me see if I can just make a little shoot here. All right, so I got a paper plate out, but um, the the. That's the whole thing. It's, but it's working really good. It just, I guess I'll try to find, um, to see if they have one. Look at that. That's so cool and it sifts too. Amazing. Look at that, it's almost all done. Yeah, so I thought about it. Oops, wrong side. Um, it's 30 years now. I've literally had this uh, mixer for 30 years. So, because I was 24 and I'm 54 now, so getting ready to be 55. Oh, shh, shh. Nobody say anything. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, so one teaspoon. All right, now make sure everything is in there first when you do this because you're gonna do a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. You could do up to a teaspoon. And I try to keep everything separate because I do gluten-free and um, regular, or gluten, I guess I should say. Mm -hmm. And then you wanna keep the um, baking powder and the baking soda um, keep those fresh always, but, uh, when I, this would be the last thing I would put into the mix because I would, I had, um, other mixers. I had three mixers going at one time when I would do all these breads. And what I would do is I did seven. I multiplied the recipe by seven and it would fit in my, um, the, what was the other one? I think it's like an eight quart, um, mixer, the big one. And then I would fill seven, seven bread pans full. And what I, one time I was like fig, trying to figure it out, like my bread wasn't rising as well. Well, if, if I was making all these at one time and I couldn't get them in the oven fast enough, then the, the baking powder and baking soda were like getting to the point where their leveling agent wasn't working. So I figured out that you got to do that last because once it hits the liquid, it starts to work. So that's something that um, a lot of people may not know, but I don't put, the, I don't start mixing it until then. But I'm going to go ahead and put the oven on 350. So that's done. And I have my fancy dancy little oven. And I need that box of banana cream. And um, this is this was my secret ingredient. Now you can leave this out. You don't have to put this in, but the banana cream um, it, it's one of my little ingredients. I always put in the, uh, the the breads, and you could also run that through the little uh, sifter. But 
these are brand new. I just bought these. Um, because I actually, I, when I made the banana bread for Ledger, I couldn't even find the banana cream, so I used the French vanilla. So I would do that sometimes too as well. So you could do that. And everything is in there now except the salt just and the vanilla extract. So, and I do make my own vanilla extract. I always have, and I used to sell that at the farmer's market as well. But the vanilla beans got so expensive that I could not afford to buy the vanilla beans at all. And I just took two teaspoons in of the vanilla extract. And then the salt. Thought I had the salt ready here too for ya. So I could make things quicker. But I'm gonna tr try to figure out how. Oh, and um, Bruce put up these new lights under the cabinets. And um, the new uh, plugs in the bar. So now I could work on the bar and not have to be over here. I should have thought of that first. Can you dehydrate? Oh, yes. And then he fixed my dehydrators so they would not uh, trip the breaker anymore. Because I, if I ran four dehydrators at one time, it would trip the breaker. So he ran their own little um, circuit. circuit. Yes, yes. So we're getting there, we're getting there. It's just taking a while to get done. Um, so everything is in there now for sure. Uh, I did that too, yep. Just always check in because even though I know the recipes, I literally have to look at them over and over because if I didn't, because I was so used to making it and I had four ovens going at one time, one on the first floor one, two on the second floor and one on the third floor at my old house. And I don't know how I did it because I never did timers and I would be making the breads and Cody would take 75. I would take 75 to the farmer's market and we'd sell all of them. And sometimes we would bring them home and the boys would eat them, but it got to a point where nobody wanted to eat them. And, um, <laughs> I, the two, the chickens loved them. So, and then you can run all, all your, um, there goes that. You could run all your baking soda as well through here. But that is so cool. That was a Christmas present to myself. <laughs> yeah, I was, I told, um, I'm like Amanda, Aman our daughter Amanda is so funny about stuff. She says that um, she'll get something new and she'll tell her husband, oh, I've had this forever. And uh, he'll say, oh, really? I've never seen it. I wonder where she learned that from. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So let me uh, wash my hands. I wanted to add too, you could um, throw in like a half a cup of pecans. Once it's all mixed, just kind of fold them in. And then also, so I, got, so I would do like banana pecan bread, and then I would do banana bread, or I did banana chocolate chip, or banana chocolate chip pecan. Or, or sometimes the customers would ask me for walnut, and so like the next week I would bring back banana walnut. So it just depends on what everybody would want. And then you just scrape your bowl down. And uh, make sure that it's all together. Mixed in, it's real, It's gonna be really thick. So, but you can look, let me show you. It's having somebody not hold the camera is harder. So, and Dusty's going to get a haircut today at three, so. And I'll get this video up on Sunday once um, I go to town because that's why I started doing more of the shorts because I like doing the videos. It's just that I can't do them because I can't get them up on the uh, internet. So, and there you have it. Perfect. And I'll throw in these little bit of pecans that I took out. Kind of fold those in. 
And then I had a little bit of chocolate chips, which the chocolate chips are really good too. And this was left that wouldn't fit in my jar. So I was gonna throw them in there too. Just fold them into so you don't get them all chopped up. And then you scrape down everything. And then I'm gonna go ahead now and get my um, little loaf pans greased. And I, what I would, uh, I would use the, I would, let me get it out. I would buy the uh, tins from um, Websterant. Wasn't it Websterant, Bruce? Yeah, Websterant. And Websterant, um, I would spray those and they came with little lids. And I'm gonna tell you, it was, it worked out really good for the farmer's market. So that's something that you could, uh, you know, do as well. So let's get the pan sprayed now. Okay, so this is how I would spray the pans. Uh, since I have a, a bird in the house, I don't use any of that aerosol stuff. So, whoops. And I just take and use um, olive oil or um, almond, I mean, avocado oil. And do you like that? That way they get all greased. And this also you could take and put a little bit of uh, sugar down at the bottom of the pan, which I did with a lot of my breads. It just depend on if, you know, at that moment that I thought about it. And every time, let's see, can you see over here? Not really. I gotta figure out a way. Okay, and then this is another thing too, like um, customers would ask me, how did you get it to rise so good and things like that? How did it do this? When you put it in the oven, I would cook um, four loaves at a time. And uh, cause I couldn't really like put them on the bottom like of another rack, but I could do four and sometimes I could get six, depending on which oven it was, into one oven. But most of the time they need at least two inches or more, not two inches, but about four inches of space between them. You gotta have a good um, space around them. So when they're cooking, that helps them, the heat to go around them evenly. All right, let's go ahead and get these in the oven now. So go ahead and get that one off. It's nice and thick, as you can see. All right, I'll move you over here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I would say maybe about six inches a piece. All right, and now the timer is 55 minutes. So you set the timer for 55 minutes and start. Okay guys, I'll be back. I wanted to show you this that I got for a Christmas from Amelia, my daughter-in-law. And I just started using this because I completely filled my other one up. And of course I have one especially for soap and then I have one especially for all the jams. Um, so this one, I started it today and I put the recipe, but she put a way to gather all your recipes for your cookbook someday. So beautiful. She said it came from Ukraine. And um, that's what she got me for Christmas. I love it. Anyways, I'm gonna clean up now. Just wanted to pop in and show you how they're cooking. Looking good, looking good. 
wanted to show you the plants, how the plants were all doing. And of course, I play music for them when, of course, I'm not on a video. So all of them are looking really good. And I'm excited for this year. All right, guys, it says it has uh, two minutes and 36, well, 35 seconds. But I can tell you right now, it's not done in the center. So you know the check-in, um, check with the center with the knife or a toothpick or something. But uh, I have to leave and I thought I could get this done. But let, let's take a look at them now because I'm leaving them up to Colby. All right, I'm back. Let's see how these breads look. Look, look at that. All right, now let's go ahead and take these out so Bruce can sample it. All right, guys, look at that. I can't wait for Bruce to try it. All right, Mr. Bruce. Mm. That was terrible. <laughs> oh my God, it's good. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. Moist. Mm. It still has a little bit of warmth to it, even even it's though it's warm. been it's been a while. Yeah. Probably an hour, right? Yeah, something like that. And mm. it, well, her his his appointment was at three, so it's. This is for me, muffin. And it's not. It's four ten now. She didn't cook no muffin bread. Look at Rosie. <laughs> mm. okay. Oh my goodness. Rosie, see, I want some, Daddy. <laughs> Rosie loves sweets. Mm. All right, guys. So, um, it's a hit. It's really good. Yeah. Mm. I sold a lot of these breads. Oh, yeah. I, I did that for. I want like, the fig one next with the icing. Okay. So mm. I need to share that one too. Mm, that's so good. You gotta get ready for that. Uh, oh, and while we were gone, Colby uh, made um, brownies too. Mm -hmm. That's the, what you got there. Some ice cream, banana bread, and brownies. Woohoo! <laughs> Rosie Oof. wants to help you. <laughs> now, in case you wanted to know, I did sell these breads um, for $7 each at the farmer's market, and that was from around 2013 all the way through 2018. Um, you probably could get, I don't know, maybe 10 maybe now, at least eight, nine, 10, at least somewhere around there. So, and um, but another thing that I wanted to tell you, like if I would bake a whole bunch of these before I even did the farmer's market, um, and what I would freeze them, I'd wrap them in uh, freezer paper, and then after the freezer paper, I would wrap them in Reynolds wrap, and I had uh, wrote the date and stuff on them and what kind they were, because a lot of times I would make all kinds of different breads, and we at one time I had a whole entire freezer full of nothing but breads because I would take one like every day out, and Colton always says he says. I remember those days, Mama, when you would come. I'd come home from school and you had all them breads made. And Colton loves bread. Well, guys, I just wanted to take you in long today um, for the banana bread, and I hope you like the recipe and get to try it as well. And I thank you so much for watching, and all the best to you, Dawn.